Hi children, welcome to the class. This is Grade Six, Chapter One, Computer Languages, and we are into the Session Three, Third Generation Computer Languages. Okay, let's start the session. Okay, how did the third generation computers look like? They were like this. Do you remember seeing systems like this? Yes, these are the old computers, the huge monitor ones with a keyboard and a mouse. Yes, these were the computers that were launched after the second generation was launched. Okay, and here you had input devices. What were they? You had separate devices for the person or the humans to enter data into the computer. How did you do that? You used keyboards. You used mouses. Correct. So these were all used to give input to the computer. So any data that I wanted to transfer it to the system or the computer, I would use a keyboard or a mouse to do that. Yes or no? Yes. And these systems had huge monitors. These monitors were called as CRT monitors. What do you call? What do you mean by CRT? They are cathode ray tube monitors, which had cathode rays emitting light, so that you get a light screen on the monitor. Okay, so that's that's when they had that big, huge tail-like thing behind the computers. Okay, it will be like this. They had big, huge tail from where they have the light emitting, and then the light will emit the screen on the computer. All right. So these were the third generation computers, and why were they separated as keyboard and mouse? Why is that? That's because the third generation computers we started using letters. Letters in English alphabets. So A, B, C, D. We had all the letters on the keyboards. And did we forget using numbers? No, we had numbers as well. So the keyboards were created for us to input instructions in our own language, in same English language as an input to the computer. You understand? That's why we started using keyboards and mouse. Previously, we didn't have an option of typing in something. We never knew that the computer understood English. Yes or no? We made it understand it. So the third generation, what happened? We have evolved it to a keyboard where we could type instruction in English. Okay. So when you type instructions, you give input to the computer, and the computer starts responding to it. And the response could be seen on where? It could be seen on the monitor. So the session or the calculation, whatever you have given it as a problem to the computer, will come back to you on the screen. So this was an output device. So anything that a computer gives us is called as a output. So anything that we give the computer is called as an input. Perfect. So when you use an input device in a computer, it should have standard things. For example, standard language. So universally accepted standard language of a computer is English. So all the twenty-six alphabets of English with the numbers were present on the keyboard, so that it was easier to make the human. Transfer or give instructions to the computers. Is that clear? Yes. So already, as we discussed, the, the generation language is specific to the generation computers. All right. So now we are going to see when was this launched? What did they use? How did they work? Okay. The third generation computers were launched in nineteen sixty four. To nineteen seventy, they were used. They were in use. Okay, and they used integrated circuits. Okay, we know what are circuits. They are like a mixture of certain transistors. Remember the transistors that we were talking about in assembly language. They were microchips. Okay, and what do you mean by integrated circuits? Yes. There were small transistors with vacuum tubes all together integrated together in one single board. For example, can you see? This is a transistor. Okay. There is another transistor here. So when I sequence these transistors on a sequential basis in an arranged format, I would call them as an integrated circuit. Yes, these integrated circuits. were called as integrated because they were transistors 
placed next to each other or in a proper sequence why did we have such a complicated version of some transistors arranged together because the instructions that we give them were also becoming complicated for the computer to understand we started with zeros and ones then we had a very short symbolic instructions and now we have come to a stage where we started typing program codes you understand so the complex of complexity of the computer also would become more that's the reason we need more power and more space as well and that's the reason we started using integrated circuits to make the computer work all right okay so what are these these are called as floppy disks okay so as we have already seen magnetic tapes magnetic drums similar to that we are going to see a storage device called as a floppy disk okay they were also storage devices where they were allowed with a space of around 3 to 4 mb of data okay the floppy disks had space of 3 to 4 mb of data and the the floppy disks was internally made of those magnetic disks that we were talking about you remember the there were circular data and the magnetic reader will start reading the data within them the floppy disks also had the same format but with a higher memory for the third generation computers to use them is that clear yes so it was launched in 1964 and it was made up of integrated circuits because its complexity was more it was more than a normal second generation or a first generation computer all right so what was there in the second generation computer these th um, these third generation languages were called as high level languages why because human beings were able to understand them it was written in simple simple english language the code would be just like english language okay so those were phrases used from english like for int do this do that while all these were english words and these words were com completed or taken from english to format a code or format an instruction that has to be given to the computer all right so they were called as high level language and they were one step about the assembly language one step above means we already started using add sub multiply in assembly language so now what did we start using we started using a little higher version of that by adding in english phrases is that clear so as i told you do while for all these were english phrases that we used in computers to make it more human readable is that clear yes and this is also called as a 3gl do you see that this is also called as 3gl third generation language which is one step above the second generation language all right so what does this language consist of these programs were written in english that was more important this was the first program that was started using english phrases itself we just use symbols remember in second generation language we use only symbols here we started using phrases and with basic syntax okay what is this new word syntax is nothing but a format for example you have a rule rule number 1 you will draw a line only using a ruler correct so you take the ruler place it on the paper horizontally right and then draw it correct so this is a format of drawing a line same way there is a format for writing a code so that's when we use something called as a syntax the format for writing any programming language will be called as a syntax to that particular language syntax differs with different types of languages for example when you talk about c language when you talk about c++ every language has its separate syntax okay every language has its separate rules that's why it is called as that particular language so the syntax is more important when you come into the third generation language and the most important thing is it is in 
human readable format it's easier for human beings to read so automatically when it's easier for human beings to read what will happen it will become difficult for the machines to read again we are going to see somebody who's going to help us in between that okay so the features of third generation languages are they used they use only english words english phrases they are understood by humans correct we can very well understand english they have special syntax syntax are nothing but rules they have special rules for every language okay and then needs a compiler that comes her helper what is this this is our helper similar to the assembler what did the assembler do the assembler converted second generation language to a machine language that is the low level language so we are going to see what does the compiler do the compiler does the same job of translating one thing to the other but the compiler will be useful for us to convert high level language our third generation language to a machine level language you understand so at the end whatever computer is going to understand is only zeros and ones so whatever format that we make it easy for us we are supposed to convert it into the low level language is that clear yes so to convert high level language to a lower language or a machine language we would use something called as a compiler what do we call it as compiler this compiler is a translator that converts third generation language or you call it as a 3gl to the machine language they are not language specific we'll see about that because compilers are used even recently now these compilers will take any form of high level languages and convert them into a machine level language is that clear so what did we learn today we learned about third generation computers input output devices and we also learned about a translator that was used by the language to be converted to a machine level language and in the next class we are going to see about the fourth generation computers and thank you for watching the session